So basically, the, the idea of Tremor Beach starts by me living in Ireland, like I was living in work and working in Ireland in, back in 2010, 2009. And I remember one weekend, a bunch of friends, we made a trip to Donegal in the northwest of the island. And we arrived there like something like six o'clock in a very dark day, stormy, like very windy. And th that was the first shock, like this uh, landscape was like super dramatic, super violent. To, to us, like we were called, like, what's this? And we were staying in this small town with almost nothing like a gas station, a pub, nothing else. And our bed and breakfast that was a very, very like super uh, isolated house hanging in the cliffs. And when, when we were there, like we went straight to the bed and breakfast because it was like nothing possible to do. We were watching the, this long beach in front of the in front of the bed and breakfast and it, it then it came to the setting came to me i say wow this is a perfect location for a story about you know something that is coming it's, it's about to come it's about to happen something like loneliness lonely characters that live here and then something is going to happen there's no way to escape there's no way to communicate even the phone wasn't working so say well i have to do something with this setting so uh, i was thinking who would live here and immediately one, at one at profession came to my mind, a musician, a composer, a creative person that wants to escape from a blog, for example, or another personal um, circumstances like a divorce. And he wants to reveal himself in this, in this location, in this, in this house that I started imagining, a house in the beach. And that's how, that's how Peter Harper was born. It's, it was like uh, the connection between the setting and who would move to the setting. Yeah. And basically everything starts by that. It's like, and now what? Okay, so thinking about the community of characters, not just the town, but the actual characters in the story, they all kind of have some things in common that sort of drive the action. Could you talk a little bit about that, the sort of role that they play together? Well, the, there is a short list of characters in Tremor Ridge. I wanted to keep it very economic. Many reasons. One of the one, uh, one of them was technical. It was my first novel, and wanted to basically try to control the list of cards and what's going on. So basically, what I did is I choose a small family that wakes up in this wakes up, let's say, is created in in this in this uh, coastal uh, setting, uh, which basically are the neighbors of Peter. These are this middle-aged American couple that lives in the other end of the beach, two miles from his house. They are the only ones living around. And then there's a girl, Judy, that lives in the town, but she's not really from there either. This is kind of uh, the small family that, uh, with, with the addition of the two, the son and the daughter of Peter, that will arrive for holidays in the middle of the story. This is the short family that's going to basically face the problem or the threat that is going to uh, be kind of the, the, the main motif of the book. There's one threat that is coming and basically the protection or what's going to happen with these characters is kind of what is going to drive the reader to the end of the book. Once again, going back to Ireland in terms of the setting, the kind of setting it provides not only because of the weather, but also in terms of the feelings of the people and the sort of mysticism that can sometimes exist in Ireland. How does that sort of play a role in the book? Yeah, I think Ireland, Ireland uh, as a country, as an experience for me, was a very important factor to write Tremor Ridge because I was living there for four years and I remember my first, first impressions about this super rich culture on music, storytelling, uh, the sense of humor, the jokes, everything. Like Ireland was a kind of impact in, in my life when I moved there. But at the same time, again, the mysticism, the superstition, the sixth sense of Peter and his family is predominant in the novel. It's kind of the, say, the trick or the driver for what's going on. Uh, and it's something that I, I really liked from my childhood. This idea that uh, the paranormal or, the, or the, the messages from other world are present in our daily life. And some people can read them, other people can't. Peter is one Peter, his family, his mother, they can't really read them. Uh, but Peter, let's say, refused to accept that he has this special sixth sense. Uh, and only when he lives in Tremor Ridge and some special things happen there, and he starts having these nightmares or visions or premonitions about his, his friends there, he will start taking them seriously. And 
Only then Peter is going to say, hey, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I'm right and there is something going to happen here. And the pieces of this puzzle that are coming to my imagination are, are really true. So the reader will have to finish the book to know, uh, to know about it. You know, it, be, it being a first-person narrative, um, this is something that maybe the reader might struggle with a bit because of the nature of the things that are happening to Peter. Um, putting yourself in the reader's perspective, how do you get through that? Well, one thing that um, is quite important technically in this novel is that it's a first, first voice, like it's a, it's a, it's a, the narrator is Peter Harper, is the, the one telling the story. And he will be an ambi ambivalent voice. He will be something that someone that you can't trust or not. You decide as a reader if Peter is, is right in what he thinks or he's basically going through a very bad phase. He's in a kind of semi-depression because he got a divorce. His wife went with a kind of the stereotype of the perfect husband. He was still in love with his wife and that's basically ultra painful for him. Uh, he's on to drugs because he has an accident at the very beginning of the books. That's another factor that can make you think, is this guy right or is he having just hallucinations, is having hallucinations or not? And um, in the other hand, there are some signal, signals like his family past and other things that happen in the book that will be defending his theory. So the whole game, the whole book is, will the last night in Tremor Beach happen? as Peter expects, or basically Peter needs uh, a good break <laughs> again from his life. So this is what is going to make the reader reach, reach the end of the book. It's like trying to answer this question all the time.